Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. I wanted to jump on here and do a follow-up on the rant that I did with Nick last night following the Colorado win over North Dakota State 31-26 in our instant reaction. Nick was more fired up than I was. But I said what I said. I meant what I said. He meant what he said. And you know what we? I also said? If you listen to it by now, I said, I want to hear, I wonder what the press conference is sounding like. I wonder if Deion Sanders is going to have personal accountability and responsibility for that atrocious performance. Leave it to yours truly, Deion Sanders. Accountability isn't his style. That press conference needed to start one way and one way only. That was an embarrassing performance. We played like trash. And it's all on me. It starts with me. It ends with me. It's on me. I did not want to hear anything about blaming a player. I didn't want to hear anything about doing this well or that well. You beat a Division I AA school 31-26. They gashed you in the first half. The only reason... North Dakota State did not win that game is because they shot themselves in the foot. And because there was, it's not the only reason, and because there's a there's a few things that happened. One, I would never have kicked it off deep. I would have, I would never have kicked it off deep. No way in hell. I would have kicked it, I would have gone for the onside kick. If I get it or don't get it, it didn't matter. It didn't matter because if I get if you get the first down, it, it, it doesn't really matter. All that said, oh, before the first half ending, when they decided to punt, I would have gone for it. I really believe that they should have gone for it. You got nothing to lose. You needed to put up some more points. You definitely couldn't give up a field goal the other way. Worst case scenario, if they if they don't score a touch, they get a field goal. They're up 23 to 14 going into the break. That's a different story. If you notice what happened in the fourth quarter, Colorado had a lengthy drive, 17 play drive. And they did it without really running the ball. It was Dinkin, it was Dinkin Dunk more so. There wasn't there wasn't any lengthy plays or really any plays that like like the Jimmy the Jimmy Horn play that goes for 65 and a touchdown or whatever it is. With the 50 yards to Hunter, they it was a lengthy drive that sucked up a lot of clock that shortened the second half. So when you say, "Oh, like I," I so I disagree with what Nick said when he, yeah, they stayed, they stopped, they didn't really stop them. And North Dakota State stopped themselves. There was a couple times North Dakota State went to the backup quarterback, and then he just, I don't even know why they would ever do that. Can't that kid Miller was sensational for North Dakota State. He could, they couldn't stop him. 18 for 22, 277, one touchdown, 18 carries, 81 yards. I literally did whatever he wanted. But Deion Sanders' press conference starts like this, and I will show it to you because I know no other way, so you can hear it for yourself. You ever felt like uh, you you won, but you didn't win? It's almost like uh, we have more points than they did. Um, giving up the last touchdown on the run, uh, that bothered me because we pride ourselves on going to get the quarterback. We have a multitude of young men that can go get the quarterback. And we didn't get that done. But I'm, I'm thankful. I'm happy we got the W. 
Uh, Ms. Peggy is one step closer to the dream and the vision that we have for her, as well as I think 31 NFL scouts are on hand tonight. And uh, I think uh, they saw what they came to see. So let's stop that right there. Third, when did he hold himself accountable? You ever feel like you you won, but you didn't win? Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Is that how he says we play like garbage? Is that how he acknowledges we're not that good? Is that how he holds himself accountable? There's zero accountability there. You ever feel like you won, but you didn't win? You were a 10 and a half point favorite on your home field in prime time. Thursday night football against an FCS opponent. North Dakota State last year was 11 and four. They lost to four. Not one, not two, not three, but four FCS schools. They were not the best FCS schools. So you can leave that stuff about how they're a winning program. Yes, they're a winning program. They were a four loss team last year. They got mud stomped by North Dakota. They get 49 on their home field to an FCS team. If this does not show you what the Colorado Buffaloes really are, I don't know what will. But let's continue this press conference of lack of accountability on the on the hand of Deion Sanders. So let's move on from there. I'm going to try my best to hold back my anger, but we got to die. Ah, okay. Anger. You want to hold your anger back. Anger on who? That's a blame. That, that's blaming. That's deflection of responsibility and accountability. If you're angry, who are you angry with? Who are you angry at? What are you angry about? I'm not going to show the entire press conference because I saw it and it was this. The, they won the game because of Shador, Hunter, Horn. That's it. Let's continue. W. So I'm happy. At Blakely Law Firm, we want to get you money for your car accident and injuries, and we want to get you your money fast. We understand that it's not only how big your check is that's important. Hey, Coach. Uh, first off, do you What's have an update on, on uh, doing well? How you doing? Uh, do you have an update on Cam Swim and Craig? No, I don't. Not whatsoever. Hopefully, they get me one uh, soon. But he's a he's a leader. He's a dog. He's uh, one of our defensive guys, and you know, losing a guy like that early in the game hurts, and it, and it did. And then just your thought on the defense's second half response. Oh, well, we knew we were going to get it together soon. We They, they were calling that every darn play that uh, they ran. I mean, the defensive coaches are doing a wonderful job. We just got to do a better job of executing the scheme and being where we're supposed to be. He compliments the defensive coaches. So what does that mean he's doing? That means he's blaming the defensive players. He compliments the coaches. We got to do a better job of executing the scheme. What was the scheme? What was the scheme, Dion? What was the scheme, coach? Tell us what the scheme was. Because I watched that game. Y'all were in the wrong scheme. Y'all should be playing zone the entire game against that team. That's not a game you're playing man to man in. I mean, heck, and even and Nick went over this last night. What was the scheme? I had a professional football player on here breaking down what happened last night. That scheme was flipping terrible, bro. And you're sitting here complimenting the coaches while deflecting blame onto the players. This is classic narcissism here. It's never your fault. Never your fault. Yeah, I don't think the ball when I said the numbers maybe a couple times, even in the first half, but the, the kid was lighting it up. He did a great job of getting the ball to the necessary receivers. We got a lot of picks, a lot of rough routes, a lot of bunch, uh, a lot of yo-yo. I mean, they did a lot of things that that were effective for them. If they played a heck of a game, I'm proud of the, their, their staff, their head coach, um, their history, what they bring to the table. You can't not discount them. I think they had knocked off what several – um, power five teams in that last uh cares what does that matter 
They knocked out several Power 5 teams. What does that matter? You walk around puffing out your chest. You're doing all your puffing your chest about how great y'all are, about the dogs on your squad, about how you improve the offensive line, about how the defensive line is, about how y'all so much better. The running game, everything is better. You ran the ball for 42 yards on 17 carries from your running backs. From your running backs. I'm sorry. Yeah. From everyone not named uh, Shadur Sanders, 14, 17 carries for 42 yards. If you add Shadur, 23 carries for 59 yards, 2.6 yards per carry. They could not run the ball. They could not get a fourth and one against a, a front seven that will have nobody in the NFL. North Dakota State will not have a player in their front seven in the NFL. In my opinion, I could be wrong. I don't think I am wrong. But that front seven for North Dakota State, slow, which is why Shador was able to evade them. because They got in a lot, but they couldn't ever make that tackle and corral him because they're a step slow. Colorado's offensive line is not improved. He was under intense pressure. Even his big throws, intense pressure. The pass interference that essentially ended the game in the end of the fourth quarter, which gave him the first down, that play, Shador made with his legs, avoiding intense pressure and just chucking it up there. And then, unfortunately for North Dakota State, the linebacker didn't turn around. Because if he had, they're getting the ball back with two minutes to go or so, about two, just under just under two minutes. If they get the ball with a ball back with just under two minutes, North Dakota State wins that game. Colorado can't stop them, couldn't stop them. Whenever they did stop them, it was NDSU shooting themselves in the foot. They had a delay a game penalty that cost them a huge play. And they made some decisions that I didn't think were all that great at times. But let's not overhype how good North Dakota State is. I the fact that we're we're sitting here and we're talking about North Dakota State like they're Alabama is crazy. The fact that I had to listen to ESPN people jump on first take and, and the different shows and and praise this performance just just it just shows how much they are in the pocket of Deion Sanders. And I don't mean by like paid in the pocket, but like they're just in his pocket. They refuse to truly criticize this. They refuse to call this out. They refuse to say what it is. They refuse to say this team isn't good. Even Paul Feinbaum today is saying, oh, yeah, I was very impressed. What were you impressed by? You were impressed by Travis Hunter. We know who Travis Hunter is. Travis Hunter is a superstar. You were impressed by Shadur Sanders. Against an FCS school? We saw him do this last year. This isn't new. He's able to escape pressure at this level against certain teams. And he's going to put up numbers because the fact is they're going to throw the ball a ton. They threw it 34 times, 26 to 34. Most of his completions in the first half were bombs. NDSU didn't have the speed or the talent to stick with uh, Jimmy Horn and Jimmy Horn Jr. and and Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter is a miracle worker. He also got away with two clear offensive pass interference calls that somehow didn't get called that would have negated huge plays. One was a touchdown. Like, what are we talking about here? What, this is I've listened to this all morning. I'm flabbergasted at listening to people that are in football, and of course they're going back. The first game of the year. Man, stop it, bro. Missouri beat Murray State 51-0. It was their first game. Utah beat Southern Utah 49-0. It was their first game. Division I schools should blow out Division I AA schools every time. I said last night, if this was North Dakota State playing Jackson State, Deion Sanders' Jackson State team, with Shador, with Travis, with his other son Shiloh, North Dakota State runs those dudes off the field. The difference is you have more talent at Colorado 
than you did at Jackson State and other areas. Shador is going to have to throw for 400 a game and score 45 points a game for this team to even be competitive when they play Division I opponents. They're going to win a couple of games. I said four and eight. I stick to that number. It's the same team. Defensively, they're still terrible. Don't tell me about how their defensive line is so much better. No, it's not. Don't tell me about how they made some plays. They're playing Division I AA school. The quarterback had his way with this defense. Miller embarrassed those guys. Let's get back to this. Uh, matchups, last several matchups. I'm glad we were able to uh, come out of there with the W. I'll do it one pretty. Hey, Coach, Jimmy Searfoss, 24-7 Sports. Yes, sir. What did you think about the running uh, situation tonight, the running backs? Mm -hmm. and then, uh, is that the Our running backs? Board? Yes, sir. And Our running backs think? are good. We, we got to do a better job of uh, – Using them a lot more, getting more yardage, but we got to take what they gave us. I mean, I, I don't think nobody's upset with that. Um, what? Our, our running backs are good. First of all, your running backs are not good. They're not good. Charlie Offerdahl has no business being on the field. No offense, Charlie. You remind me of Rudy from the movie, and you remind I mean, you look like me. You're the size of me when I was in high school and college. My guy, like, this is who Dion got rid of all these other guys for, was to have that guy in the backfield and a couple others. But we took what they gave us. You never tried to run the ball again. Well, you tried and you couldn't. Let's just call a spade a spade. Shout out Ben Daniel. You couldn't. You couldn't. They stuffed your running game. An FCF school held a Division I school to 23 carries and 59 yards. And that same school rushed for 157 yards against your defense. These are facts. If Travis Hunter is not on that offense, Colorado loses this game, and they lose it badly. Like, it wouldn't have been close. Travis Hunter is the difference in a game like this for Colorado. Here's the problem. They're going to get blown out in a bunch of games playing like this against Division One opponents. But we took what they gave us. At what point am I going to hear accountability for Deion Sanders on himself? Is he ever going to be accountable? Um, Hayden showed you what he could do. Charlie is Charlie. Um, we were good. Charlie is Charlie. Charlie had five carries for 15 yards. Hayden had was nine carries for 20 yards, if that's, the, if that's the correct one. They had one back with nine for 20. Charlie's with five for 15. Another back at two for seven. That's your running back crew. Getting ready to throw 290 in um, at the conclusion of the game, but then they scored because I wanted you guys to see him because he was going to put that game away running as physical as he does. Okay, we're going to – I wanted to put 290 in. I don't even know who 290 is. I don't even care who 290 is. We were going to put 2-9 in because he was going to put this game away with running as physical as he does, but they scored. What? Does that even remotely make sense? Does that even remotely make sense? So I was going to put my fourth string running back in the game. In fact, I got to look up who the hell 2-9 is. But you're going to put your fourth string running back in this game in the final possession because you wanted to show us who he was because he, with as physical as he runs, he was going to put this game away. 2-9 is Micah Welch. He is a freshman Five foot nine, 205 pound running back. A three star back out of Georgia. No disrespect, Michael Welch. I have no Michael Welch. I have no idea who you are, and, and, and that's fine and dandy. But don't sit here and tell me you're going to put the fourth string running back in here. And because he runs so physically, he was going to put the game away with running the ball. Well, why didn't you put him in the game 
when they made it 31-26 since he's such a physical runner and he was going to put the game away. No, instead, you threw the ball not once, not twice, but three straight times in that possession. Let me confirm. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. NCAA football. I want to confirm this. But you, like, like, the man's lying even when he's not lying. He doesn't even know the difference between a lie and the truth. Like, he's sitting here lying to you. I was going to go put in my third string running back. I'm sorry, fourth string running back. Play by play, fourth quarter. I'm sorry. Oh, Lord. What's the, what's going on here? Let's see here. Shador Sanders pass complete to LeJante Wester for two yards. Timeout North Dakota State. I'm sorry. But the, the first play was a Travis Hunter run for no gain. Then it was pass, and then that pass, that went for the penalty, and then another pass, incomplete, which actually let North Dakota State have a chance. Then they ran the ball with Dallin Hayden for no gain, and then another pass by Shador Sanders for seven yards to Jimmy Horn. He's lucky they completed the pass to Jimmy Horn. If that's an incomplete pass, you would have given the ball back to freaking North Dakota State with a minute and a half. The, the, the absolute levels of incompetence in this coaching staff are mind-boggling. It's glaring. But you wanted to put the, the running back in who's your fourth string back in the game. Fourth string running back in the game to seal the game. Then why didn't you do it? Because you know that's capping ass bullshit, bro. Like what? Like <laughs> the lies, the lies. But I'm I'm uh, not overly satisfied with with how we ran ran the ball, especially with the yardage per, per game. But we could do much better. But, uh, hey, Coach Tyler King with the Denver Gazette. Tyler, what's up, boss? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, Travis obviously had a big night, three touchdowns. Yeah. Was uh, was there one that stood out to you the most? Uh, Every last one. Of, well, we called the first one like when you when you're playing against. What we, Forget it. Forget it. That's three minutes of that ridiculous interview of nonsense where he doesn't ever take accountability for his failure as a head coach. He failed. They won, but he failed. This is the exact same team that we saw last year. If you want to take a Another look here. You want to know what Division I teams are supposed to do Division I Division AA schools? They're supposed to blow them out of the building. And I know that doesn't always happen. But typically that's what happens. Let's take a look. Utah, ranked 12th, played Southern Utah. They won 49-0. The game was 35 nothing at halftime. Kansas played Linwood. I don't even know what Linwood, Lindenwood. I don't even know what that is. Um, I'm going to guess they're Division I AA. If that's Division II, I don't know why Kansas is playing that. But – they're up 34-0 at halftime. It's, they won 48-3. UCF plays New Hampshire. They were up 29-3 at halftime, and they were up 57-3 going into the fourth quarter. They won 57-3. They didn't score in the fourth. That is what should happen in these games. That is what should happen. New Hampshire last year was 1, 2, 3, 4. They were 6-5. and five. Not a great school, not a great team. Not they're not they're definitely not better than North Dakota State. They're they're not even close. But but that's what you're supposed to do in these situations. It's supposed to be a wipeout. I this man is the most unaccountable. He never holds himself responsible coach in college football. You can love him. You can love his bravado. You can love his swag. 
You can you, you can love all of that. At least he did the interview without sunglasses on. I can say that. But you can love everything about him. You can think he's a great guy. You can think whatever you want. But if you think he's a great coach and a developer of players, you're not paying attention, bro. You're not paying attention. How can anyone ever be accountable on that team when the person who is in charge does not hold himself publicly accountable? It's always someone else. Your defensive coaches did not do a good job. You want to know why I know this? Because if you coached properly and you developed properly, the things that you claim were not executed would have been executed. That is what would have happened. You would not be out of position to make a tackle. You would not be falling for every damn fake they do in the backfield. You would not have given up 449 yards to an FCS school. Let's keep it a buck. All these things that you claim are literally a direct correlation to bad coaching. Don't tell me someone did a good job and then blame the players for not executing it. You're supposed to prepare them to execute. You're supposed to have built in that football mind that you read your keys. Did you guys watch film? Was there a film session that they did in the last six months? This is the same damn offense North Dakota State has run forever. And this is probably the worst North Dakota State that we have seen in ages. Let's take a look season by season. North Dakota State Bison. This is the last, since 2011. That's where we're going to start because that's when North Dakota State's true dominance in Division One AA started. 14 and 1, national champs. 2012, 14 and 1, national champs. 2013, I'm sorry, 2011, 2012, 2013, 15 and 0, national champs. 2014, and that was under Craig Bowl. 2014, under Chris Kleiman. 2014, 15 and 1, national champs. 2015, 13 and 2, national champs. That's five straight national championships. 2016, 12 and 2, they lose in the division, the, the, the semifinals. They finish third. 2017, 14 and 1, national champs. 2018, 15 and 0, national champs. 2019, under starting under Matt Entz, 16 and 0, national champs. 2020, I guess that's COVID year. They were seven and three. They lost in the quarterfinal. They finished in seven, six and seventh in the polls. 2021, back to national champs. This team has won 10 national, nine national championships in 11 years at that point. 2022, they go 12 and 3. They finish second. They lose in the national championship. 2023, they went 11 and 4, and they finished third. They lost in the semifinals. And now they have a new coach. What happened to Matt Entz? Did he get fired? Matt Entz was named assistant head coach to for defense for the linebacker. He, he's at USC now. So he was hired as the defensive court, as I guess, an assistant. This man left a head coaching position to be an assistant coach in Division One. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. So it, it doesn't appear he was fired, but I don't know. That's a little bit odd that you would take a, co a coach. North Dakota State's an elite Division One AA program, historically. But they had the worst season that they've had. Last year, I'm gonna scratch COVID because that was a messy year. But their worst season or second worst season over the past decade and a half was last season. That is not that is you did not play the best North Dakota State team. You didn't play the 16 and 0 teams, the 15 and 0 teams. Let's stop acting like you are. I, we have to stop this. 
This is a lack of accountability. This is lack of accountability 101. You could not stop the same offense they run forever. You watched no film on this team. Maybe you did it. If you did, and that's my point. If you're watching film, like really analyzing film as a player with coaches, with players, your players should see every key. Why are you falling for the fake if you are reading your keys? Well, if you know the plays, he just claimed in this video, they knew the plays. They were calling the plays out. If you know the plays, but they are, why are you missing tackles? Why are you? Why are there holes the size that tractor trailers can go through? Why are they completing passes left and right? Why can your defensive lineman never get to the quarterback? Why, why, why? You failed, you failed, you failed, you failed. And all you're going to sit here and tell me is that they coached a great game? Man, you're crazy, bro. <laughs> this is laughable. This man has zero accountability, and that is the problem that you have in Colorado, and it's going to be the problem that you continue to have in Colorado because he does not hold any one of his sons. He doesn't hold either son accountable. He won't hold Travis accountable. Travis is a good dude, though. So I don't think you have to hold Travis accountable because I don't think Travis does anything wrong. Shiloh Sanders lays a hit on somebody after the ball spiked into the ground two seconds later and then acts like he didn't know what he did, like he did nothing wrong. He draws a 15-yard penalty, prolongs the drive, and Dion doesn't even bring his ass to the bench and say, sit your ass down here for a series. We're not going to do that. There's no accountability. They line up off sides. Why isn't the guy who lined offside sitting on the bench next to him? No accountability because he has no accountability for himself. That's all I got. I had to do this because he did exactly what I expected him to do. Not be accountable for his failures as head coach. Know your thoughts. Come on.